Hey, 3D modeling class, it's week 11. Today, uh, you'll see that I am not in my usual spot. I'm actually recording in my office uh, at work. So, you know, being productive. Today, we are gonna talk about, uh, or we're gonna, I'll show you just like a little example of like, I'm calling it procedural modeling. Um, but that's kind of a blanket term for lots of different things, but it's sort of like um, modeling something using like a set of rules and tools that uh, doesn't necessarily uh, involve like modeling. So the example today is uh, we're gonna make like a set of poker chips that like has been strewn across um, a table. And, uh, and so we'll use some physics and we'll use a couple modifiers to like create one poker chip and then have it be the rest. So that's, that's how what I'm describing as uh, procedural modeling. So kind of m m doing a lot with a little. Anyway, um, so let's, let's just jump right over. So you can see I've got fancy green screen happening even though it's, uh, it's just a regular old wall behind me. You'll also n maybe hear that I have like white noise pumped into my, uh, my room here. So that's why it maybe sounds like that. So I'm trying my best with my, my lav mic here. Okay. Uh, let's make a poker chip. Let's make a simple poker chip. So um, I'm going to delete my light and my camera as well. Uh, the goal here, we're gonna, because we're going to be creating lots and lots of poker chips, we want our one that we create to be um, pretty simple because it's going to be multiplied dozens of times. So we want to have uh, a low number of polygons on our poker chip. Uh, so let's uh, just start with a cylinder. I'm going to go GZ, and I should have done that. Uh, Shift A, start with a cylinder. I want to open up my add menu here and uh, make a conscious decision here. So uh, our depth really only needs to be like 0.1 meters. Uh, I think that actually looks like about the width of a poker chip. Uh, and then we want our fill cap to be a triangle fan because we're going to be putting um, like our different colors of poker chips on here. And uh, the vertices, you know, 32, I don't know, I don't know. Uh, 32 is probably fine. Let's go with that. 32 seems fine. Okay. So we've got our one poker chip. Um, the other thing we could maybe do to add a little bit of detail is to like do a quick bevel on the edges. Um, so let's, I'm just gonna try it. Let's just see how it goes. I'm gonna do one, uh, click one, and then I'm holding down the Alt key to uh, select the loop here. I'm gonna hold down the Shift key and also do this edge and then Shift and Alt to do that loop as well. So I have both edge loops selected. And then I'll do Control B to bevel. And let's, I just want to do like one of the tiniest bevels, just like this, just like that. Okay. Uh, the other thing, the other thing, let's do is I, I want to have like a couple. And you know what I should do real quick is I should open up. Uh, I need a reference image. All right. So I I internet searched uh, poker chip, and this yeah, this is almost exactly what I'm thinking. So like. If I count this one, let me count. I'm actually counting my finger. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Uh, little white dots around the outside here. That seems pretty good because we've got 32. Yeah, we can make that work. We can make that work. OK. And so the next thing I want to do is I just want to like uh, insert faces to kind of make these different lines. So we'll have like one big circle in the middle. And they'll probably have like a couple of um, rows like one, two, three uh, insert faces after that. So follow along with me. Here we go. Uh, so I need to do this on both sides. So maybe I should I should uh, do X-ray select and do an orthographic view from the top like this. I want I'm going to hit three on my top rows of keys here to do face select, and I'm going to grab all these faces here. I suppose I might do, I could do select circle like this and go and try to select everything like that. Okay, so now we've selected all the faces on both sides. Great. Let's go to insert faces. 
And let's just draw this in here. So we, this is going to be like um, the first circle. And because I didn't quite get it, I wasn't able to like drag my mouse in close enough. I can also just use the S key to scale this down like that. And actually, you know what? Maybe I should go the other way. So maybe this is, we'll, we'll, we'll start from the outside and work our way in. That'll be easier. So there's less selecting. So uh, now I need to think a little bit harder. I'm going to right, I'm going to control Z undo that. I need to go back to my reference image because I got to think a little bit harder about this. Okay. So these, these outside ones do go all the way to the edge. So then we'll do, we'll do one insert faces to here, then two, three, four. Okay. I got it now. So I insert faces, one, this is the big one here, bigger ones. And then left click to apply that. I get another row right there, just like a skinny little row. This one's a little bit bigger. And then this one's about the same size as the second one right there. OK. All right, turn off X-ray select. So let's, uh, let's now uh, put some colors on this. So let's go back to object mode. We'll start by just like putting um, a regular color on here. Uh, so let's go new material and just make it, you know, a red red poker chip. Let's go to material preview like this. Great. Maybe can we right click and shade smooth? Sure. That looks all right. Okay. So uh, we need to have uh, like a white material now to, to kind of show the the other bits of it. So let's add a new material on here, new, and just make this base color totally white. And we need to go into our, or our orthographic view. I'm also going to pull up my reference image. Uh, this is the one I'm going off of here. And so if we've got 32, um, 32 sections going around, we might not be able to do exactly what we want here with math. So we've got 6, 32 divided by 6. We might just have to do 8. Uh, eight like big chunks around here. So that means, well, OK, so let me think of it like this, 12. So there's like equal parts. Uh, <laughs> don't do math. Live. Um, I'll, I need to pause. <laughs> OK, OK, now that I had time to like count. Uh, so uh, I'm turning on x-ray select here so I can select through so I can get both sides going. But I'm just going to go, I'm going to do like every fourth one. Because that's that equals math. Um, so we'll do th these two. Skip three. Skip three. Skip three. Skip three. Skip three. Skip three. So I suppose I could do just do like every other like this maybe. Maybe that'll be nicer. Yeah, sure. Let's do that. Okay. And now with these, so I'm in edit mode. I selected through. I had X-ray selection on here with this button. Make myself a little smaller here. Um, I had x-ray select on, and oh, I want to be like right on that line there, OK. <laughs> uh, I'm going to select this material too, the white one that we made, and I'm going to hit a sign here. So those ones ha are now white. And you know, I think it, I think it goes all the way around too. Um, so what I should do is I should also like select all these. I should have selected these. So that it like the color spills over the side. Selecting all these ones and all these ones here. And a sign. So now we're going, the white goes all the way around the side. And then going back to our reference image, uh, oops, I must have closed it. Um, we'll go in and we'll get we'll get every other one of these here. Do I still have X ray select on? Yes. Get every other one of these here. Maybe yes, this isn't quite as exciting because it's not staggered as much, but you know, you can try to set this up a little better if you'd like, like that, and then assigning that one. And then also everything in the middle gets the white as well. So selecting all these, assign. Okay. Kind of looks like a poker chip, maybe. I gotta pull my reference image again. Okay, yeah, close enough. I mean, we could we could do we could just have like the the, so, the middle of it solid too. You know, like I could we could go back to this. Maybe I do like that better. I feel like it's too much white here. Maybe uh, let's go back to edit mode. Select all those and uh, assign that blue red one instead. Do I like that better? Maybe. 
Maybe, baby. Okay. Turning off X-ray select. Tab to get it back in object mode. Okay, so we've got we've got one poker chip. Oh no, no, I gotta I gotta make I gotta make this a little bit better. Select edit mode. I don't I don't like how close that is. I wanna grab I wanna grab all of these, all of these faces. I'm gonna carefully select actually you know what I should do is I should uh, just do select a box like this, get this one, and then alt kind of do it like this. No, of course not. That would be too easy. That'd be too easy. Select circle. Okay, let's just do it like this. Focus on your mouse dexterity. Holding down the shift key and selecting all the boxes. Did I miss that white one? I did. Yeah, let's just get all these and all these. I know I got an extra one there. I'll go back and remove it in a moment. Okay, and then remove that one. Okay, and now let's scale all this in. Okay, I'm feeling much better about this. Maybe even you could even give it like a little twist if you wanted. <laughs> if you really want to get fancy, okay, now I'm getting fancy. I'm selecting these ones. Holding on the shift key and selecting these ones to make it look a little bit more like the picture, I could we could S and like bring these in a little bit too. I don't know. Okay, that's enough. That's enough. Poker chip. Uh, let's now make this a bunch. So an array modifier. So let's add a modifier on here, and let's make an array. Boom. There's two. There's eight. Great. Um, now, so we've got multiple chips, great. What if we wanted these to like be kind of strewn on a table? Sorry, I'm peeking a little bit. Um, we need to use physics. Um, so if, if you're in the animation class, we, we talked about physics simulations not that long ago. Um, and f using physics is helpful uh, in just regular old modeling too. So I'll, let's do a quick physics demo. So I'm gonna uh, just G move this guy up here. Shift A, uh, whoops, not a cube. Shift A, add a plane. Let's scale this up. Okay, so we want these chips to fall down onto this plane. Uh, we have over here, sorry, we have over here a, uh, this guy here. This looks like a little m moon orbiting around a planet. Physics properties. So two different things here. Um, because these are poker chips, they are rigid, they're solid. We want to put a rigid body on the poker chip. Uh, there's two different types of rigid bodies, an active rigid body and a passive rigid body. So active is something, if I hover over it, it says object is directly controlled by the simulation results. So that just basically means like, it moves around. Like it, it can, like physics is affecting it. Um, a passive means uh, it, it is like, it interacts with things, but it doesn't move. So uh, like if I, uh, so rigid body. So we put rigid body on, the, on our poker, I'm gonna call this poker chip. Poker chip. And this plane is gonna be floor. So hopefully you can guess which, what, these both need a rigid body because we want these chips to fall down onto the floor. Hopefully you can predict which one we're gonna use. So the floor, we want a rigid body and this one is passive. So we have our rigid bodies on here. The next step is to, is actually, you have to go to your timeline. You can actually see that it's starting to like turn orange down here. Uh, this means that it's, it is calculating, or it's doing the simulation for the physics. So go to frame zero, and then press spacebar. And we should see our poker chips land on the ground. Great. So like, just for a proof of concept, um, if I go to, if I go to uh, my floor and change it to active, both of these are going to fall down. Or like if I if I move my floor up like this above and make the chips passive, the floor is going to fall down on the chips. Dong. 
and roll down into uh, oblivion. OK. But actually, maybe you noticed something interesting here. Um, the, uh, the floor only, it looks like it only hit this first chip. Aha. So what, what can we do about that? So first of all, let's just, let's just reset this. So uh, location 0, 0, 0, like this for the floor, please. There we go. Oh, and so like it, if you're if you're forward look down here on your timeline, if you're like ahead in the frames and you change something, it's it won't show up right away. It's because it's remembering the simulation. So you, if if everything's out of place, just remember to go back to frame zero and it'll it'll be there again. So uh, just resetting this. Our on the physics tab here, our floor has passive rigid body, and we want our poker chips to have active. And also just note, so like if I rotate this and, and play, you can see that uh, all of these are connected. So we need, we need to do something about that. OK, so first thing to do is we need to bake the array. Because right now, this is still like officially, it's just one poker chip that has this modifier on it. So step one is go to your modifiers and uh, go to your array and just hit the drop down and hit apply. So this is, we're baking in this modifier. Um, another way to, to do this is uh, geometry to mesh. And I already forget where it is. Uh, anyway, just do it over here. Hit the drop down, apply. <laughs> And so now, um, it has applied the modifier, but it's still only one object. So if I play this, like now it's the whole thing, you know, like hitting the ground and bouncing around. Um, but it's, uh, it's still acting as one thing. Uh, so we also need to separate each individual poker chip. So in object mode here, we can go object separate, uh, or no, do I need to be in edit mode? Yeah, tab edit mode, hit A for all, then go to mesh, separate by loose parts. So this will pull apart the each poker chip. So if I go loose parts like this, you can see we've got poker chip, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, but are we there? Has Have we done it yet? Let's see, let's press space bar. Oh, interesting, so they're separate but uh, they're not being very kind right now. Um, and so a couple things are happening. Uh, the main thing is um, they, are sh they still share the same origin point. And uh, we need to just double check the, the physics properties on, on all of these. So actually, on all, let's do hit A to select all of these objects. Uh, let's go object transform, uh, nope, transform set origin, and then origin to geometry. So this will move the origin points. We have everything selected. It'll move the origin points for everything to the center of their own geometry. So I'll hit that. All right, now let's, let's give it a go. All right, looking good. OK. So we, you know, we, got, we, got, we got this doing what we want here. Uh, but let's uh, let's let's make this a little bit more interesting. So I'm actually going to delete these poker chips real quick, and let's do let's make a bunch. So um, if I open up our uh, our overlays and I want to do statistics a little bit, so right now we've got uh, 417 faces on our one poker chip. But I want to make like a hundred poker chips. So let's let's. Let's do this right here. We want like a cascade of poker chips in, in, our, in my little scene here. So let's, uh, let's go back. I'm going to re-add a, well, let's go back to frame, whoops, frame zero. I'm going to make this, rotate this a little bit more reasonably. Uh, let's add our array modifier again. And I just want to up the x factor by like the teeniest, tiniest amount, 1.1, because I don't want them to like overlap and kind of for it to get a little goofy. Um, so I'm going to make this, I'll make this, you know, 8 again, like that. G move this over here. Uh, and let's add another array. So let's add another array modifiers. And this, let me close this first one. 
Rather than factor x, let's make that 0. Let's factor y now. So factor y 1.1. So you can see that now we're kind of multiplying in this direction. And let's make this 8. OK. Let's add another one, array. Rather than uh, x, let's make x 0. Let's go to z and make this like, you know, 0.2. Or sorry, z. Or, no, OK, sorry. Relative offset. This is based on the, uh, the size of the object itself. So it's, it's not 0.2 meters. It's like 0.2 of the like size of it altogether. So if you, if you do 0.2, it's, it's going to be overlapped 80%, 20% will be sticking out. So 1.1 is like what I want to do here. So we can see that we're, we've got like two chips here stacked on top of each other. And we can make this more. We can make this like three, too, just to show the spacing a little bit better. And let's make this count uh, five. So let's do the math. We've got eight times eight times five is 320 poker chips. OK, let, now let's look. OK, so face is 133,000. So you can see that. Uh, by multiplying things a bunch here, you can get your face count pretty high. So I maybe have too much detail in my original poker chip. Like maybe I shouldn't have beveled the edges. Um, so we'll we'll see how well our physics simulation can handle this. Uh, and so now uh, let's do the things that we did before. So again, like if I just play this right here, it's just going to be one thing that falls down. But we need to we need to separate all these. So I'm going to apply all of my stuff. And the, the, the keyboard shortcut to bake all of this is Control A, to that's your apply menu. And then this is visual geometry to mesh. And so now, again, it's still, it baked the modifiers in. So this is all one big thing. Um, but we also want, remember, to adjust the, uh, sorry, separate objects, or separate by loose parts. So we'll go into edit mode, A to select all, mesh menu. Separate by loose parts. And now we have our hundreds of poker chips here in the thing. And now let's do A get, or we have everything selected. Go back into object mode. A to select all. Object, set origin, origin to geometry. There we go. It's so now put your timeline back to frame zero, hit the space bar, and let's see all of these chips fall. Nice. They're falling a little bit too neatly, so I'm going to go back to frame zero. Let's kind of make this. Whoops! But I don't want uh, I don't want the floor. I want everything but the floor. So I should I should just select like this. Did I get everything? Okay. Let's R rotate a little bit more and G move it up a little bit. Let's see what this does. Yeah, there we go. So you can see that they kind of fly around a little bit, but that's that's cool. Okay. Now, zoom. It's looking good. Okay. Uh, let's let's just let's spice this up a little bit now. Uh, let's go render preview. Let's uh, let's switch to cycles. Let's shift A. I want to add a light in here. Give me a spotlight. G Z. Move this up. And uh, you know this needs to be like 1,500 watts or something like that. And change the radius a little bit, or uh, not the radius? Yeah, the radius. But we also want uh, the spot size. Move the make this a little wider like that. Okay, this maybe needs to be like 2,000. No brighter. 3,000. Cool. All right. And the other thing. We need to do, oh, I, I need to change my device to the GPU. There we go. That should make my recording a little better. The other thing we need to do is uh, we, they're all red right now. So let's let's use our um, geometry or, uh, shading nodes to add some uh, var a variety of um, colors to this. OK, so in our shading workspace, let's hit the use nodes. Uh, and let's get, uh, so we want to select uh, material 001 here. 
And so it, it, it actually doesn't really matter which one you select, but yes, we want to select the red material because this is the one that we want to manipulate. Uh, so uh, first, first one that you've, we've actually used before, actually, you know, maybe, we, maybe I did this in the animation class. Um, the first one we want to add in here is a color ramp, color ramp. Drop that in here. So we are connecting the color ramp to the base color of our principal. And so uh, color ramp has a, a value of like zero to one. And actually, let me let me let me zoom in on this a little bit. And see if I can explain this. So a ramp assigns colors on a line of, or like scale of zero to one. So like here, so you. With a color ramp, you input, you can see this is a gray socket here. You input a gray value into here, which is a number between zero and one. Based on that number, it will choose a, a color from this color ramp. So like right now, black is of the value of zero and white is the value of one. So like here in the middle, it's, it's like whatever. So everything like in our scene here has this gray color because we're just saying, the value of this is 0.5, which is right in the middle. So I can, if I move this down to here, it'll be black. If I move this up to here, it, it'll be white. Uh, so we need to get uh, ran. We need to randomly choose the different surfaces that this material is on. So we need uh, we need to and have it randomly choose a value uh, to plug into the factor here. So we just need to get, get some data from the scene here. And so uh, we need to, in our you know, node editor here, shift A, we want to get another input. And uh, we want to input the object info. Object info. So this is, this is pulling information from the object that this is a material on. We're getting the info, the object info, from this material. And handily, we just have like a, a random, a random factor here that we can just plug right in. And so what this is going to do, and now you can see that it's it's randomly assigning a value from zero to one, plugging it that value into the color ramp and attaching it to the surface of each object. So now it's as simple as um, rather than doing linear, we can do uh, constant and uh, and here now we can just like add in different colors so it might be a little tricky to see so let's make our black let's change the black value to be you know red and now we can we can add in colors here so uh, the white one let's change this to like you know a green a dark green maybe what color are poker chips you can hit the plus button to add another one you can rearrange these two. Like this one can be on the other side, and this one can be like uh, a black. Aren't there black poker chips that's worth more? And also, uh, let's make it a blue one. So make this one like a dark blue, like that. This green is too dark. There you go. Okay, and so like based on however however many you want of each color is how big you would assign make this like chunk so if we only want a couple of black ones you would make this like this much re part really small because like it's random it's randomly choosing a value on this scale so it's more likely that it's going to choose a red one it's less likely it'll choose a blue and green and even less likely that it'll choose a black one so so we've we've randomly assigned color values here I think it's kind of cool uh, Let's just let's roll around this out a little bit. So let's uh, let's go back to uh, let's go back to layout view here because we're kind of done with that bit. Um, you know we can let's add a material to the table here. We'll make it we'll make it green. You know like a, a kind of like felt a felt table. Uh, turn the turn the brightness down a little bit. Turn the roughness way up so it's like really flat and the specular, so it kind of looks soft like this. We need a camera in the scene. Shift A, uh, camera. Control Alt Zero to kind of place my camera. 
Uh, yeah, yeah, control of zero here like this. Get kind of a close up. And depth of field, focus object. Let's focus on this one, poker chip 267. Actually, maybe we even focus on, maybe we focus on this one right here. Crank the f-stop down. Yeah, yeah. Starting to look, starting to look real nice. Um, OK, so since this is what our scene kind of looks like, I'm going to, so here's the other thing we can do. Um, we can like apply the transformation for all of these things. Um, so we don't have to like let it simulate every single time. In fact, what I should probably do is just um, apply all transforms like this. And we can even, oops, hold on, undo. Oh, man. Let's let it play out again. There we go. So sorry, that was, that was the wrong apply. So here we go to object and then rigid body. And we can either, we can apply the transformation here and just leave them where it is. Or we can even just remove all the rigid bodies like this. And so if we hit mm, undo, didn't mean to do that. I think, I think you do have to apply and then remove. <laughs> OK, so let this play out a little bit. We'll kind of let things settle. Settling, settling, settled. OK. Spacebar. Everything selected. Object, rigid body, apply transformation. Then you can go object, rigid body, remove. OK, so now, now they're all just sitting here. So each one can be like moved individually and edited again, like if you, if you really want to. Like if you had to, wanted to have one like floating around like this. OK. So checking in on this now. Uh, let's add just like another little light into the scene here. Uh, shift A, you know, you know me. I need like a little area light. Let's G move it back like this. Size scale it up. Let's make this like like a little, uh, you know, kind of like a pinky light like this. Up the power to like 1,000 watts like this. And let's see what we're doing here. Yeah, cool. Uh, we, I also need to move my plane, G, Shift, Z, move it back like this so that we're, you know, in the background. And of course, I need to change my, uh, my world color away from the gray. Don't like the gray. Make it black. All right, here's, here's what my render's starting to look like. OK, cool. So we could add, like, you could keep going and adding glow and things like that or whatever. But let's, let's do a, let's do a render image, too, see how well this works. I realized I didn't, I didn't uh, set a time limit for my render. So it's going to do 4,000 samples. Let me just close that real quick. Uh, change my render settings. Uh, I don't want 40. I just want 30 seconds worth of 30 seconds worth of rendering here. Uh, so let's go render render image. All right, and so there's there's my my rendered uh, pile of poker chips. So you know you could, uh, and this was we only rendered one poker chip. And we created this whole thing. So this is this is what I would consider procedural modeling. Modeling. Some people would, and it, and it does mean a variety of things. For some people, procedural mod modeling means like, what one example I saw was, uh, like you can have a table, like model a table, and just like changing the scale and the size of the top of the table would automatically move like the legs of the table with it. So that's like another type of, it's sort of like more of like a programming type of procedural modeling. Um, so uh, that's, that's uh, a different example. So anyway, um, that's it for this like kind of quick example. Um, but it's just like different ways to create things. It doesn't all have to be like, Extruding and like adding in a cylinder and doing this like there's you can um, you can do some fun things with like minimal actual modeling and more kind of procedural stuff. So 
that brings me to your final one hour assignment for me, a one hour model. And that is, I want you to create a bowl of anything. So like, just like make a bowl, it can be simple. But like have, uh, just use this tip. So like use an array and, and add rigid bodies and just have them fall, have your model, like a little thing, fall into a bowl. And just give me, give me a, uh, a bowl of something. Something simple, because keep in mind, like if you're multiplying, if you're going to be multiplying it h hundreds of times, it needs to be like a very simple mesh. Um, I've, it's probably too much detail that I put on my po poker chips. You should probably even try to have less detail. Um, but anyway, so that's it for this week, uh, week 11. Uh, thanks for joining us, and uh, we'll talk soon. We'll Zoom next week. Goodbye. <laughs>